Mutter Jungfrau und widmet sich in aller Aussicht als Zeugen in einem Kämmer. Also, ich werde Sie begleiten, hinweg durch dieses Sprintrennen, das eine relativ kurz Distanz ist. Es sind insgesamt 25 Minuten, die wir fahren werden. Aber ich glaube, für diejenigen, die am Lenkrad drehen, das ist ein gewisses Maß an Arbeit am heutigen Tage. Die Lufttemperatur 36,7 Grad und ich sage, es liegt ja nur noch einmal, es ist deutlich wärmer als am letzten Wochenende. Daraus resultiert dann eine Asphalttemperatur. Wir messen 42,5 Grad Celsius. Und ich bringe nochmal die Verantwortlichen des Transportes in Nürnberg, die haben nämlich wieder geklaut. Da war ja das ganz große Thema am gestrigen Abend die Asphaltauswertung aufgrund der enormen Hitze und der scharfen Belastung durch all die Reizungsschaden am Wochenende. Aber der mit Epoxidharz ausgebesserte Asphalt scheint sich in blendender Qualität zu präsentieren. Man fühlt immer mal wieder ein wenig im Wasser nach, rechtzeitig natürlich vor dem Überslaufen in Lenz, beziehungsweise hat sich das ja heute Abend auch mal auf die Fahnen geschrieben, auf der Sinn, aber keine Leute das nicht so in den Wasser halten. Und damit sind wir nicht mit uns schon in der Tat aufgeräumt, dass den Leuten bezaubernd die Lecken nicht rund, um wenn die Wasser rund um sind, von die Dicker, der ist ja alle Dicker, die am Ende kommen. Ich glaube, vom Experience der Norris sind am besten. Ähm, ich weiß nicht, was wir genau machen. Jetzt lasse ich mal ganz wieder für mich spielen. Wir übernehmen die Spiele. Ja, ist sicher. Ob dann keiner festmachen darf. Ach, der Ruhe. Aber bitte gehen wir uns weiter festmachen. Ja, ich weiß nicht, das Auto ist. Ich bin ein bisschen kurz im Auto von Rennen rausgehalten. Ja. Setzt das Auto. Der sagt, der fühlt sich hier sehr, sehr wohl. Und noch mal gut, ich werde hier die Pole Position entsprechend umsetzen können. Ich versuche einfach noch eine Position weiter. Ja, gerne. Ja, gerne. Und dann kann ich da einfach zurück zu dir. Ja, liebe Kerl. Hello everyone, welcome to the sweltering heat of the Norris Ring. Two Carrera Cup races this weekend, as we've seen most of the season, and we should have a cracking race for you here in the late afternoon at this incredible tight street circuit. I'm Andrew Marriott, with me Ben Constant-Juris, and just the grid girls are leaving now. 
and just looking at the front row of the grid and it's Rennie Rast and Sean Edwards, two of the real stars of not only this championship but also the uh, Porsche Super Cup series which runs alongside the Grand Prix and uh, Edwards and Rast running in uh, both series and they are uh, teammates here at the two limit team as we see the cameramen also leave the grid. Kevin Estra, the Frenchman, leads this championship, but only due to the misfortunes of Sean Edwards, which included a puncture in the opening round at Hockenheim when he was leading the race. And then a, a penalty, which was a somewhat dubious penalty, I thought, at the first of the two Spielberg races. Now, Edwards is the only man who is a multi-winner this season. He's had three victories and the other three races have been shared by Estra, by Nicky Tim, who uh, won for a second year running at uh, the Lauschitz Ring, and uh, Norbert Siedler, who won the second of the two races in Austria a month ago. Since then, a lot of these boys, as I said, have been racing in the Super Cup, and uh, Ben, pretty similar looking championship there. Yes, indeed, two rounds in Bahrain and a cancelled round in Catalonia. They also raced in Monaco and Valencia last weekend. René Rast has taken two victories. He's on pole position there. And Sean Edwards has taken one single victory. Siedler taking also a victory as well. Yeah, they're both running in the yellow colours of Deutsche Post and uh, run by the Two Limit Racing Team, who uh, really know how to make these cars go well. So we should see some good inter-team action. We've also got the Attempto team. We also have some very quick cars. And, of course, Franz Conrad, the uh, two-limit team run by Paul Shortman. And it's also running a third car for Klaus Backler, who's one of the two Porsche Junior drivers in this, who's been giving pretty good account of himself during uh, the opening uh, rounds, because we did have the one race at the Nürburgring 24 hours. And that was a single race there, supporting the, the 24 hours. So, getting ready for this incredible circuit. Ben just talked to us a bit about this street track here. In theory, it looks simple, but getting it absolutely right is uh, so difficult. And just we saw the DTM press conference a few moments ago, and Matthias Ekstrom saying, good enough is not good enough around here. <laughs> got to be excellent you've got to be right on it well here's the grid Rene Rast and Sean Edwards on the front row Estra and Tim Siedler and Christensen and from Willer and Bachler Engen Jan then uh, Van Langen the uh, driver from Holland who's done a lot of success in Renault's down there in 12th place and then another driver from Holland Voss going through we've got a uh, amateur section in this as well and uh, that's usually pretty closely full with uh, Bill Barazzetti, who races under an assumed name. He's a German dentist. Doesn't want his clients to know he's racing, I presume. He is the fastest, uh, leads the uh, amateur championship. So, so. 2.3 kilometers, 26 laps. The lap taking just under one minute each. Plenty of bumps in the braking zones very high speed and and while there is only four real corners it really is very difficult to master and also with these Porsches it's going to be slipstreaming a fair 35.9 degrees air temperature very hard to keep your concentration in hot sweltering closed cockpit cars yes it might be 35 degrees outside but just imagine the windscreens and the glass reflecting the sun into your eyes and just heating up inside 44 for the tyres to contend with. Green flag at the back, we're about to go racing. Sean Edwards won this race a year ago. Can he repeat it? And off they go. The two two limit cars at the front as they go down to the first hairpin with that very bumpy braking. This is the tight of the two hairpins, and already they've been split there. And I think it is Rast who is in the lead, and uh, Edwards barged out of the way, and we've got oh, a no. spinner and a traffic jam. Oh, goodness me. But I'm sure we'll get a safety car here and finally unscramble themselves, so maybe we won't, but uh, valuable time lost. 
and it is Rast who is in the lead, but I think in that shamozzle there, Edwards got into second place. Rast was the only one that had a clean start because uh, Edwards got pushed round. We've got an, a car in the mid pack there with a punctured uh, radiator. So Rast from, I think, Christiansen oh, yeah, in second position. Yeah. He's had a relatively clean start. Edwards being pushed out to fourth position there by, I think, Seedler going up the inside of him. But plenty of craziness further back. We've got the five car and the 34 car sitting at uh, the exit of the first hairpin. Well, let's confirm this. It is Rast from Christiansen, Seedler, and Edwards after that is in fourth place. More crazy. Is this the yeah. replay? No, that's no, the next lap, that's isn't the it? the next lap. But more <laughs> craziness, as you say. And uh, I think Edwards trying to get past Christensen, is it? That's past Seedler. And a bit of a lock-up. Maybe damage to the uh, third of those yellow cars, because he's run a little bit wide. And I think maybe he's punctured a radiator. I saw something coming out the left front. Oh, Nicky Tim, who... Uh, had the fastest race lap here last year, throws his glove in frustration. Right. Here we are, look. I think it was Nicky Tim who did this dive down the inside. No way of getting it stopped. Yeah. He was followed by that white car there. They yeah. then tipped. The, oh. Yeah, one of the Attempto cars. The two other Attempto cars got blocked by that. Causing all sorts of mayhem. There's no way you're going to get round. It looks like Philip Eng, who was the second of those yeah. two in. But Nicky Tim, the 88 car. Uh, he... Yeah, he got a big old punch. So there's, yeah. that's Philip Eng in the 34. It was the five car of Yat van Lagen trying to make up far too many places in the first corner. Hadn't qualified well. And then the next there's lap Sean round. Sean Edwards was attacked by his teammate. Ooh. Yeah, and that surely damaged well, Backler's car. Yeah. yeah, there we go. He's in the pits. Yeah, Backler. Leaking radiator. Well, he's one of the junior drivers, lessons to learn, and being mentored by Sasha Masson, and it hadn't helped much here. And they're so fragile, these cars, on the right front. That's where the radiator sits, and if you do any sort of knocking from with that part of the car... Christensen was the, the, the turquoise-coloured one that was right in the middle of all that. So did he benefit them from yeah, throwing himself absolutely. down the inside? Yeah, but he did. Christensen, as we got... The number 12 car coming in, that's uh, Matthias Gamnauf, currently 18th in the championship, Austrian driver. So lost plenty of cars on that first lap. Van Lagen and Eng have ended up stopped down at the hairpin. And Nicky Tim also in the well, pits. Ed Edwards is now fifth, but just got the fastest final sector. There is uh, the lady racer from uh, Denmark, just saw her. So quite a bit of damage done. And I think Kevin Estra is going slowly in the 99 machine. 15th spot after being caught up in that first right. lap accident. He hasn't come past sector two and the leader of the championship looks to be out of this first race. Well, we saw the damage to Barazzetti's car. It's all a knock on effect from that incident. And there is Estra. Estra. He's backing it up out of the way. Can't tell what the problem is. No steam or smoke coming out from anywhere. Could be a broken drive shaft, I suppose. It could be a puncture. Is it a bit down at the back? And uh, here's Yarn, another Attempto team car coming in. David Yarn, who's 13th in the championship. Had Too a good much. run in the second race at uh, Spielberg. Finished about fifth there. <laughs> wow, this is like a demolition yard here. <laughs> Well, we should have expected it, really, after the, the first two races of the weekend have been pretty crazy. No safety cars yet in this one. No. Well, they all unscramble themselves. Right. Oh. Well, Rennie Rast had his door open. Right until the end. Right until the very end. Then we had it That's headed cool. off. Not a good start from Sean Edwards. No. He gets swallowed up by the attempt to Watch the car with the duck green. Yeah. But which is it? Far well, too Well, there he's coming. Look. Yeah. Down the inside on the brakes. Yeah. Edwards turns in, not expecting anyone to be there. No. Well, that tips Kevin Estra into a spin. Yeah, yeah, that's what happened. Estra was tipped into a spin. And. Yeah, we had the. Uh, Difficult to say who that is. Yeah, no, that's the Conrad Racing Team youngster. 
Was that Norbert Seedler in the duck? Or was it Seedler? Where's no Se Don't think so. I think that was um, Edwards making up a spot. Yeah, and sliding wide, trying hard and clanging it against the barrier. Maybe as he came out. If he didn't, it was very very close. And he's Sean. trying. He's trying to pass from Weller. We had a good qualifying. And Sean Edwards, who. Uh, Ooh. Had his first experience at Le Mans a couple of weeks ago. And certainly enjoyed it. So there's from Marilla. Ready, pushing hard. Look very close to the barriers there on the exit as she came under pressure from Sean Edwards. Second in this championship, leads the Super Cup. Certainly a master of Porsches over the last few years. Rast leads by 3.9 seconds over Michael Christensen and Seedler. And then that battle we've just been watching. Well, I think it was Christensen that came diving down the inside and caused all that and got away with it. Yeah, car seven under investigation. And that is Christensen, so you're right. Yeah. Yeah, I think he was the man who caused that incident. Just came so fast down the inside from about sixth place. And the stewards have been pretty on the button here so far this weekend yep. with other championships. So I think we should expect to see Christensen being removed from that second and, uh, position. And look at Sean Edwards then pushing hard. Yeah, we had an earlier Formula 3 race. Danny Juncadella won it and then was disqualified, having uh, had an incident down at that famous hairpin. Romanvella goes to the inside to defend, but sweeps back onto the racing line under braking. Edwards just fractionally comes off the brakes in the ultimate braking point. Very end, but can't get close enough. He's definitely close enough to attack, but in that braking zone, just wasn't enough to really have a successful move. Yeah, well, we're not used to seeing this man up here. He usually runs in about ninth or tenth place. And there's Christiansen, pretty sure he was the man who came diving down, caused the incident on that one. Yeah, pressure from Seedler, now his teammate. Here comes Sean Edwards. Yeah. Throws it down the inside of the hairpin. Just doesn't quite no, get it no, stopped, it, though. No, it didn't get it to stop quite in time. Now, back in his early career, Sean Edwards was known for having a bit of a hot head and getting frustrated when yeah. things didn't go his way. I'd say it's still the same. <laughs> and he has had a lot of bad luck, I have to say, in this season, the, the puncture particularly in the opening round. And, also, the the 30-second penalty he got in Austria, I thought, wasn't deserved. So Seeder is ahead of Christensen then. We haven't seen that pass being made, but the two Conrad cars have changed spots. And Seedler now will set about trying to reduce the gap to Renault Rast, which is now 5.7 yep. seconds after just nine laps. Yeah, well, Renault Rast did not get involved in that incident, made that great start, got into that hairpin and kept away from the crashing and banging. And Dodgem car racing that went on. It was like a, it was like a Dodgem arena, wasn't it? Everybody all tangled up together. We've got a back marker between Rast and Seedler, and the 11 car of Elliot Erhardt is lying in sixth position, and then Schmidt in seventh. Well, taking a little time with this investigation. So we'll see what happens to car number seven. The youngster Michael Christensen is uh, Sean Edwards, a bit frustrated now. Well, he's lined him up for another pass. Yep. He's good through that chicane, and now can he do the same as what he did last time? He needs to be a little bit earlier on the break so he can just nick the apex from, from Umbrella, but this time not brave enough, not close enough to do it. Sits behind, and maybe he'll just try down at the other hairpin, the other big braking zone. Again, all you need to be is beside the car. You don't need to be in front of it because as soon as you're beside it, you have the inside line for the corner and then the pass will be stuck. The back marker is also going to play a part in this one if it uh, doesn't resolve itself in the next couple of laps. Edwards a little bit braver and a little bit later on the brakes into the first hairpin. Nice and close, but now he's going to have to wait another 30 seconds before they get to the second hairpin to have a go at passing. From Umbrella doing well then to defend this position, a little lock up as he changes down the gears. A bit messy through the chicane then. Edwards much, much tighter, hits the wall. 
Hits the wall, Whoa. and surely that's allowed. Edwards passed. It's going to be an easy yeah, one now. Has. But he's hanging on there. We've never seen this sort of performance from the Swiss driver in the past. Philip from Weiler. Raced in Formula Palmer Audi, remember, in 2009. And then uh, last year he was in the Seat Leon Super Cup, which used to be a DTM partner series. He got the first bit wrong, which pushed him wide for the second bit. Just a small there he was nudge. To, yeah. And I wonder how much damage that would have done to the rear of the car. Wow, well, just a just a kiss, wasn't it there? So right, we've got a uh, drive-through penalty for car seven, which is Michael Christensen for causing that first lap accident, and also for car four for having an inaccurate grid position. Well, it's always uh, disappointing when that happens, isn't it? Hovert Voss. Yeah, Voss, one of the amateur Dutch drivers, and I think he was leading the amateur section actually. Or maybe, no, he wasn't. He was just behind Harry Colan. Still is at the moment. In uh, the amateur section four, drive through, flashing blue light. And let's uh, see how long it is before Christensen. Well, they weren't showing Christensen's number on that board, were they? It was only no. number four. Yeah. So Christensen still has three laps to serve this penalty. He'll be told if they have radios, I'm sure they do. Well, the pitch to team. Wow, well, I don't see any aerials on the car, Ben. No. So I suspect they don't. It was sort of a good start from Michael Christensen, but a little bit too optimistic going into the, the braking zone. Found himself in a position he really couldn't get out of. And Christensen is going to serve a penalty. He's not going to drop down a huge amount. The pit lane's pretty short here. Yeah, Christensen has raced to the GP3 series. And again, uh, yeah. no board. There's no board for him. No, that's. Wonder what's happening there. Yeah, Christensen, who uh, had a couple of podiums in the GP3 series last year, has raced in Formula BMW successfully. Had a good karting career as well. Had a, a win in the Macau Kart Grand Prix. Well, he should have won the Formula BMW Championship the second year he was in it when he was racing for Mucka Motorsport. Yeah. But the whole team got thrown out for a technical infringement. But he's a fast driver, Michael Christensen, making this transformation. And there is Voss, who, as well as having an inaccurate grip position, has got an inaccurate uh, right front corner to his car. <laughs> his teammate parked up on the side of the road, retired a few laps ago. So the intrigue and interest now is what uh, Rask can do. I think Christensen is, here he is, taking that penalty. Right, where's he going to drop from? He was third. I this is why. Far too optimistic down the inside. No way he's going to get the car stopped. Hits Sean Edwards. Then the car starts to rotate. Then there's a chain reaction behind. With the, uh, the four car actually wasn't paying much attention, was he? No. He sort of just ran into the accident. Christensen so exits the pit lane. About eighth. Hmm, difficult to say exactly where he is, but... He hasn't lost that much. Seven. It's going to be eighth or ninth, isn't it? So now we've got three of the real regulars up front. Rast, Seedler, and Edwards. And Seedler, uh, who's uh, had uh, wins in the uh, Super Cup this season. Edwards leads the Super Cup at the moment. Could retake the lead of this championship here today. But the points are all pretty close. Yeah, there's three points. Yeah, well, there's 20 for a win. And 16 for third. So, no, uh, that or any Rast, I think, will jump into the lead of this championship if it stays like this. Yeah. Can Sean Edwards catch Norbert Seedler? The lap times are much better for uh, Sean Edwards. The gap at the moment, four and a half seconds between the two. Last lap, they were pretty equal footing. But Edwards just a fraction faster yeah. on this one. Yeah, Edwards, uh, fastest first sector of everyone here. Franz Conrad. <laughs> <laughs> Got his piece of paper that he's signed and said, yep, my driver's yeah. in the wrong. Yep. It's all a learning curve. And uh, you can see the heat hill here. It's still 36, de 36 degrees out there. There is uh, 
René Rast. I've said it before, but he was in that uh, shootout for that final Audi drive that uh, Adrian Tambay got, and uh, was uh, pretty sure he'd, he'd got the got the drive, and didn't look for a run in the Porsche Carrera Cup Deutschland for this season. Finally found out that uh, he didn't have the Audi seat, so had to scrabble around, and this deal came together just four or five days before the start of the season in Hockenheim. And, uh, of course, Rennie is a former champion in this series, a former champion in the Super Cup as well, one of the best Porsche drivers there is. A little guy that bounces around the place. Nielsen into the pits, the 91 machine from 13th and last. That's not a drive through, that is a problem with his Porsche. I got the extinguisher out. We obviously got an engine problem and yeah, that's retirement. the retirement. Danish lady, young lady racer driver, Christina Nielsen, with a very stripy motor car. She's probably got a handbag in that colour scheme as well. So from quite a large grid of cars, we're down to just yeah. 12 machines out that's of circuit. That's unbelievable. And we've still got but we got laps. Yeah, but we've got the cream at the front still. Yeah. Eight laps and eight minutes to do it. Getting the torch in there. Something's leaking. Something's leaking badly. And remember, they've all got to race again tomorrow. So there is Rast. And uh, pulling out the lead over Norbert Seidler. And then we've got Sean Edwards in third place. Doesn't look like he's going to have the pace to catch Seedler ahead. It's a fraction every lap, it's, but it's only a fraction. It's only about a tenth. And therefore, Edwards potentially has to settle for that third position, unless we get a safety car, and it's very plausible here at the Norris Ring. Just wondering what's happened to Michael Ammermuller, who's uh, been racing in this series, certainly up until this race, but uh, is not here this weekend. Must I ask the Porsche PR lady, Ava Maria Burkhardt, she knows all about these cars and drivers. She'll give us the answer that I must admit I hadn't noticed that the former Red Bull test driver Amamula was not competing today. He's not on the on the list there, is he, uh, Ben? Not that I can see, although uh, he does share the same number as Thomas Pivoda. Which is uh, slightly confusing, the, the number two. So Rast it is in the lead now from Seedler with a 6.3 seconds. Can Edwards do anything from third place here? Cola, one of the uh, amateur drivers, they've got a separate podium for them. He's uh, well up there in uh, ninth place by far his best uh, result. So we've got six laps remaining. So all started with total mayhem. There is Pivoda, eighth yep. position, and has been port, uh, caught and passed by Michael Christensen, who's got himself back up to seventh position. So after that drive-through penalty, having come out of third, Christensen is damage limitation, really, up to uh, seventh spot, lying at the moment um, in about ninth position in the championship. After two-thirds of the um, uh, qualifying, sorry, the Result third position at the Lausitz ring. Yeah. That, his, that was his best result of the season so far. Yeah, well, Rast had his uh, first win in this championship, but this season at Hockenheim. And still looking for his second win, which looks as if it's going to come his way. But then we've seen so many twists and turns at uh, the Norris ring. This hugely hot Saturday, but anything could happen. Rast Seedler, Edwards, from Weiler. And usually these Porsche Carrera Cup races are characterised by terribly close racing. We don't have it at the moment. Bit of damage there to Edwards' car. And uh, it looks as if it's only cosmetic, Ben, but you don't know if that's... Uh, pushing the water temperature up a little bit. Well, that's it, and that's exactly the area where you need to be so careful with these cars. Yep. 
Just because it's very easy just to knock the, uh, it's not even damaging the radiator, it's knocking the hose off the radiator. Yeah. And that's where you see all the uh, water spurting out from, much like we saw uh, with the Volkswagens earlier on today as well. Yeah, that was a race that was red flagged after we had a victory from Ola Nielsen. Which is fifth out of six races. He's running away with that particular championship. It's another partner series to the DTM. But uh, let's concentrate on these rear engine sports machines here. The classic 911 shape. Still got the same DNA as it's had for oh, well over 30 years. They've just got fatter and wider. <laughs> as if the original car was on steroids. I've just seen shots of Colin there down at the Lake Hairpin and uh, Rast able to relax a little bit I think now. Yeah the gap's very much stabilised at about seven seconds. Edwards pushing on and he's got it down to 3.6 to Seedler. Three and a half minutes remaining though. Yeah this is going to be tough to do that as Rast Seedler Edwards She's going to shake the championship about a little bit. Estra's not going to score. She's going to stay on the, the 106 points. And uh, Rast will go up to uh, 116. And uh, Edwards, I think, will go to... Uh, he's on 99 at the moment. He'll, uh, yeah, he'll add 18 points. So, yeah, no, I think uh, just do the sums again, but I think it will be Edwards who lead the championship after this. Lights well, flashing from Edwards, trying to get the uh, back markers out of his way. Yeah. So he's still on a charge over the line to complete yeah. lap 24. On to lap 25. Well, there he goes. Yeah, it's a little frustrating to be, have to be off the racing line when braking there. See how he's using the power of the rear wheel drive Porsche to suck him out of the corner. Rely on the front wheels for the first part of it. And as soon as you can get on the power, get on the power and let the rear wheels do all the work. Yeah, second generation racer. Dad was one of the stars of the classic Formula 5000 racing. A lot of success in sports cars, great sponsor hunter. And of course, some Formula 1 success as well. Guy Edwards and also uh, Famous for his uh, part in saving Nicky Lauda's life in the fiery accident at the Nürburgring all those years ago. Guy Edwards lives now in Monaco, as indeed does his son, Sean. Just hear the blip of the throttle as they change down into that hairpin again. But I think it's probably a fruitless chase, but nevertheless, keeping himself right in the game here. And we'll have to see the official points, but on my reckoning, it's going to be a couple of points ahead of Rennie Rast. This is the last, this is the first time this weekend we've seen the checker flag come out yep. at the end of a race. And it's going to go to Rene Rast after a masterclass in Porsches. Rast picks up race one victory here at the Norris Ring by a convincing margin over the rest of field, helped in part by an accident at the first corner but no doubt a masterful drive as well. His second win of the season. And a key, of course, was his great start. He made the superstar off the line, kept himself out of all the mayhem at the first corner, and then he just motored away from the rest of the field. And there, uh, congratulations. It's the uh, boss of uh, Two Limit. Salutes his uh, hard-working team members. There he is. And they always know how to celebrate that team. Edwards in third, and the third of their drivers obviously retiring earlier on. Norbert Seedler splitting those front two in second spot. So, a race with a big crash at the start, but after that, well, it was all about Rennie Rast and uh, good charge by Sean Edwards, who had damage to the front and rear of his car through no fault of his own. The ultimate golf cart, did he just catch the side it. of it there? Yeah. There's uh, Franz Conrad, he always enjoys his racing, pretty fine driver in his time. Franz, there he goes over to uh, Paul Schlotman. And 
Others join in. So we will have the podiums in a moment. And just a replay of René Rast taking the chequered flag. The team celebrating on the right-hand side. Nothing better than the team enjoying the fruits of their labor. Well, they've taken the car apart, bled the brakes, changed the pads and discs, refueled it, and then replaced any parts that may have been damaged throughout the weekend. Some serious work to do in the Porsche paddock for tomorrow morning's race. But Rast, the winner, that is Norbert Seidler. Receiving his congratulations. And let's see what Sean Edwards' reaction is. Probably was expecting more. Yeah, a little frustrated, yeah. isn't he? Yeah. It's just... Yeah, he's explaining what happened, isn't he? <laughs> so that's running rest the second win of the Carrera Cup Deutschland Championship. He's uh, a double winner in the Super Cup already. And there is confirmation of the results. 8.2 was the gap between Rast and Seidler, with Sean Edwards lying in third. Eventually, that gap stabilizing about three and a half seconds. A great result from Frommenbrella in fourth. He'll be very, very happy with that. And climbing to sixth in the end was Michael Christensen. That would have been a good charge to watch ahead of the 11 car of El Erat in seventh. And. Uh just looking at the uh, positions in the amateur, the B category. We had a win for Harry Colan, his first since uh, scooping up both the uh, amateur victories at the Hockenheim ring. He won that from uh, Wolf Nathan and Bill Barazzetti, and they'll get their own podium. Well, Barazzetti was the man who was leading the championship in that category, with Nathan just behind. So that tightens their championship even further. As we go through our top three, Rast, Seeler, and Edwards. Yeah, they know how to celebrate using the uh, BMW gear there, sitting on the pit stand. Well, there won't be too much celebrating this evening because their race is early tomorrow yeah, morning. Yeah, some of the teams have got quite a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. Well, they've been up from, uh, well, I think their practice this morning was at 7.15, wasn't it, Ooh. Ben? Because you know, they had all this track problem yesterday. They didn't get their qualifying in, so they had to arrive very early. There's Rennie Rast. Goes over to thank Bichelin for their tyres. And his mechanics, the team members. Marshall show their appreciation. Been a long day because they've been up since uh, the crack of Sparrows. What's it? Mm, especially in that heat as well. 30, still 36 yeah. degrees out there. And we are approaching six o'clock in the evening local time. And that's quite incredible. Here is the podium though. René yeah. Rast, Norbert Seidler, and Sean Edwards on the third step of the podium. Short version of the <laughs> German national anthem there. Just the one stanza. <laughs> She's a first, if you will. Rast, Siedler, and Edwards in their 911 GT3 Cup cars. Trophies being presented. We've admired the trophies, haven't we got a good look at one of the Formula 3 ones earlier? Very nice indeed. 
bit of silverware for the mantelpiece. Well, but it's not silverware, is it? Well, it's, it's shiny. A trophy. Yes, it's shiny. You wouldn't want finger marks on it, would you? No. At least uh, you won't need to get the old silver out to <laughs> polish it. Soap and water, I think. Uh, between these three, there's plenty of trophies. Seedler champion last year in the German Championship. Yep. Edwards, super, super fast. I'm sure he won the Super Cup last year, eventually, did he? No, of course, uh, Nick Tandy won it after a huge battle with Sean Edwards. Nick Tandy now in the GT Open Championship and winning there, so he won last weekend. But, uh, switched from the Conrad team. We seem to be always preparing a very good car, but always a little bit underfunded. And uh, I think he found a better deal. It's just on the cusp of being a full Porsche factory driver. Not quite. There's Rennie Rast spraying the bubbly. And, uh, if I know Rennie, he'll be down in the Porsche hospitality tent later chatting up the reception girls. That's his normal position. That's if he's not off to Audi, chat them up. <laughs> I bet he really wishes that those, those champagne bottles had been left in the fridge rather yeah. than out in the sun. Yeah. It'd been lovely to be sprayed with a bit of cold champagne rather than the... Uh, well, we had a situation uh, earlier in the day with the Formula 3 where they were all discussing who'd won and there was a, a girl waiting for the drivers to come to the uh, press conference holding some nice cool ta uh, towels and by the time the drivers actually got there they'd warm <laughs> right up. Well, that's the one podium. We'll possibly bring you the uh, podium from the... Uh, oh, here, let's do the points. I was wrong, look. Rast is still three, one point ahead of Edwards. Didn't do, but something's quite right. But they're both vaulted ahead of Kevin Estra and then Seedler and Nicky Tim and uh, Van Lagen. But uh, oh, now we've got the podium. And we've got two Dutchmen up there. And, uh, Harry Colan. Wolf Nathan. And Bill Barazzetti. Racing under an assumed name. Where he got Bill Barazzetti from was years ago a guy who raced an Avar sports car who chose the pseudonym of Powell Joey. Sounded like a name for a budgery car to me, but there you go. It used to be popular amongst amongst uh, Italian racing drivers to pick pseudonyms. There was a famous Formula 3 driver who chose the pseudonym Tiger. <laughs> Sadly, he died. In days of 60s and 70s Formula 3, it was very dangerous. So they get their trophies, two Dutchmen, and uh, the dentist who prefers to race under Barazzetti. Of course, if any of his clients are watching, they'll <laughs> recognise that. it. Ah, that's my dentist, look! <laughs> He's that's making old. too much money out uh, yeah. of it. <laughs> he seems very happy with his performance, though, that's for sure. Yeah. 11th. He finished overall. Yep. 4.6 down on his nearest rival. Yeah, they good fun, that group. And they always race close together. They're not that far off the pace, so they get their own podium. And they pick some bunting goes flying. Our camera gets a soaking. Oh, he's really enjoying it. He's making the best of that, <laughs> isn't he? He wins a prize for that. For Absolutely. Car prepared by the Dutch Land Motorsport team. Indeed, the two Dutchmen both driving for Land Motorsport. And we've got the air horns there. And, uh, I'm sure what, Reddy Rass still hanging around there. He's back there. He's going to have another look at the podium. <laughs> I think it's probably interview time, is it? Yep, I think that's what it's all about, the uh, Porsche commentator. And, uh, here is championship positions in the uh, B category. Barazzetti, Colin, Nathan, Cena, Nielsen, Voss, and Hannes Weimer. But looks still pretty close between the top two, but Barazzetti came into this in the lead and still leads it today as we look down on some of the old architecture of Nuremberg. The track just about seven or eight kilometers away from the center of the town. 
So that's about it from the Porsche Carrera Cup Deutschland for today. Action packed at the start. More coming up tomorrow. You can catch it on the Porsche website. But from me, Andrew Marriott, for Ben Constant we'll say goodbye until tomorrow. <laughs>